Um, I think that you know that uh, Native people today have about 4% of our original land base. That was the slide you showed. But on that, we are some of the wealthiest people in terms of not only that we are who we are. Um, you know, I just say that because um, wealth is not managed, measured by money. Mm -hmm. It's measured by also quality of life. And if you know who you are, and you know, you all need a lecture on this, I'm sure. Right? But anyway, uh, we're wealthy people, but we also have a great vast amount of natural resources. So two-thirds of the uranium, one-third of all western low sulfur coal is on Indian reservations. Chunks of oil, like the people who live in Anwar, uh, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, are actually Gwich'in. You know, people that was, you know, their territory way before it was Anwar. Um, the single largest hydro projects in the, in the continent are in indigenous territories. You know, so that's just a little bit of a background. Um, you know, that is because, uh, you know, of a set of circumstances. I mean, one, you know, we are land-based peoples, and despite attempts to move us from our land, today over half our population is urban. Uh, we do retain our land and, and we try to hold on to who we are because it is related to our land. That is what it is to be a land-based culture. And we have an understanding, a whole worldview, you know, I'll be hanging out with you, but you know, like our months, our ceremonial practice, our sacred sites are on land, they aren't someplace else. This is the holy land for us, Oma'a King. Here is our holy land right here, you know. And so the America's had a long process trying to get us off that, you know forces away, forces to be brown-skinned white people and to assimilate into industrial society, but we have fought, you know, so anything we still have is because we fought for it, you know, and, and there's a lot of, you know, you'll see a little bit of that, um, you know, in these communities here. I live on a reservation in northern Minnesota, that's where that photo is, and, um, you know, border towns to the reservation are sometimes really racist. I mean, you're, you know, that's the reality of the situation, and that is, uh, you know, for a set of circumstances, uh, because of guilt, uh, because of trying to, uh, you know, somehow rationalize things. So you make it sound like, well, those Indians, it would have happened somehow anywhere, anyway. You know, we took that land, we know it, but they didn't really deserve it. They're a bunch of drunks. That, you um, know, we've been, uh, you know, 200 years of America is kind of a tough thing to live through. We should just go with that, you know. But the, what has happened to our people is very, very severe. You know, whether it is, uh, you know, the military genocide. You know, colonialism takes many forms. And uh, interestingly enough, the word co colonialism, it comes from the same root as the word colon. Did you ever know this? Isn't that interesting? Colon, it means to digest. You know, and it's basically the digestion of one culture by another. And it could be military, it could be economic, the taking of people's land and resources, you know? It could be the domination of government institutions like, you know, the federal government taking jurisdiction, imposing a government system like a tribal government system. We'll see that at Blackfeet. You know, the issues that are being grappled with in these communities, yeah? It could be the education, the forcing of people to, to into boarding schools. You know, and this isn't like Phillips Exeter. <laughs> you know, this is like forced into boarding schools where they abused you severely, you know, until you barely knew who you were. You know, or it, it could be religious colonization of the churches, very heavy, you know, in our communities and still very prevalent. Where you are told, you know, it was not until 78, 1978, that our religions were legal in this country. You know, and I'm a member of our Medewan Society. Amy actually went up there with me, yeah. to our little grassroots spot there, and our Big Drum Society. But those were illegal. Sundance religion, the religions that, you know, that we hung on, it's very significant. But those spiritual practices are how we retain who we are, yeah, you know. Um, or it could be um, the, the paradigm of science is a form of colonization, because science is a worldview. It is not the be all and end all. And the reality is, is that they don't know what the hell they're doing. If they want to talk about carbon sequestration and their scientific modeling, you might as well throw those models out the window. They have no idea what they're doing. But the process of colonization affects people. You know, we are clear that we're colonized as indigenous people, although we suffer from various levels of trying to figure out how colonized we are and, you know, what's going on. But the reality is, is that America is pretty colonized. You know, people relinquish control to experts. Mm. That was a really great plan, you know. <laughs> That's how we got half of where we are, is we relinquish responsibility, you know. So most of us don't know where our food comes from don't know how to grow anything, 
I mean, get real. You know, don't know how to produce basic energy. You know, I mean, we, you know, my house, we got a wood stove, right? You know, don't know how to, you know, make food, make, you know, prepare food. I mean, people a lot of times just go heat or buy, right? Don't know how to make clothing, sew it, right? You know, we outsource. And even in our in the feminist movement, there's a whole discussion, and maybe we'll have that, you know, about how, you know, in in the t in the rise of the feminist movement, there was this whole disassociation of housework mm -hmm. that we wanted to be professional women. That's what Jennifer talks a lot about, too, mm -hmm. a lot, you know, and that whole idea. And what is that in terms of what it, we become? We become women who are, you know, gringa North American women who are entitled to consume. That's what we do. You got an economy based on consumption. 70% of the economy is based on shopping. And that is not durable, you know? And that means you're in constant conflict, you know, with everything else. So, you know, the issues that we are looking at are symptoms of a larger set the, the, of the reality. And this reality is not durable. I spent most of my life fighting bad projects, uh, bad coal fire power plants, bad coal strip mines and uranium mines, uh, dam projects. Um, these are two projects that we have just, this one is, one is defeated and one is, we're hoping on its way out. Um, you know, I'm not going to go too much into them, but it's coal fire power plant. There's been about 230 proposals for coal fire power plants in the last decade, about 28 are still viable. That's because of like the Sierra Club. You know what I'm saying? This is because of grassroots citizens and, and folks are fighting these coal plants. You know, because coal is dead. Although Montana thinks that coal is alive. And that there's such a thing as clean coal, right? Which, uh, right, right. It's, it's, which is an oxymoron. But this is a plant we fought. It was a thousand megawatt coal plant called Big Stone Two BS Two. I don't know if actually it's BS Two. And uh, little redneck town of Fergus Falls. My reservation's up here. I should get this graphic redone, but I don't quite have that together. But our reservation's up here, and it's kind of a little redneck town, twelve thousand people, company town, Autotel Power. And they had this plant that they had proposed. It was 1,000 megawatts. They started losing investors. Some of you are involved in investor work. But really, really important because these are bad investments, these coal plants. Carbon, right, price of carbon is going to keep increasing. You got to keep on your work and your diligence, you know, in this as shareholders. And uh, so they started losing investors. They went down to 500 megawatts, you know, Sierra Club, Just Energy groups in, in Minnesota fought them. We wheeled in, you know, I mean, we supported them, but it looked like they had it pretty good. And then this last 500 megawatt plant, they're still down there. And uh, we, we brought in uh, the tribe, because they didn't even talk to the tribe. That's this environmental justice issue. The power plant was just upwind and upstream from the tribe. Totally, you know, not uh, talking to them. And so we brought the tribe, and we went to that town of Fergus Falls, because I believe that if people make decisions, they should see your face. Mm. You know, and they didn't want to, they didn't want to do that. You know, so we brought them in, they were all like mortified, tried to organize a debate, but they didn't want to debate. You know, they were headed out. Anyway, and then we went to the shareholders meeting, which I think that George talked about, I went running after my computer, but this is us going to the shareholders meeting and they had all these cops, they were like all worried, the protesters were coming, and that was the protesters. <laughs> <laughs> this is Asia Kearns from Sierra Club, this is Peggy Peters from Sisseton, environmental program officer, this is my 10-year-old uh, son, uh, Glenn Kahneman Gasco. This is me, and this is a guy dressed as a giant otter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it was about six months after that, in uh, September of 2009, that they announced cancellation of the plant. You don't want nukes. And I think you guys are all astute enough to know that. There's a reason that there haven't been any new nuclear power plants built in this country in the past 30 years. Um, I didn't have the, the chart on, uh, I thought I had the chart in here on, uh, well, I got this energy waste chart, which is what I was telling you. Brief, briefly, you don't want to reboot this system, you got 57% of waste, right? You know, and basically, I'm not going to go through the whole details of this, but between your electrical generation, the inefficiency at the front end in your coal plants, natural gas plants, you got a huge amount of loss because they're inefficient, right? They're blowing a third or two thirds of the power out the top as heat, right? They don't have efficient systems, and then, you know, add to that transmission, same thing here. You know, between this and food, you're, you know, putting more calories in food in petrochemicals than you're getting out as calories, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why in the discussion on renewables energy or in the next energy economy, do not, do not get sucked into that we can't support this economy. No one should. 
Mm. You know, it's like supporting something with a big bunch of holes in it. It's waste, and it's an absolute waste. Okay.